Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Grish Beer Reviews today. Uh, like I said yesterday, uh, we got one more of those Pike beers that we're going to do. This is Pike Tandem Double Ale. And it does have a code stamped on the front of the label here that says 035D. And I went to the website just to try to figure out what the code was and there was nothing on there about the codes. It said it may, they make it year round. I'll look on the bottle when we come back. Now, Total Wine has put their label on the side here with the barcode on it, and it's got a date on that of 7-4-2013, so I'm pretty sure that's when they got it or when they put the barcode on it, so I don't know what the 035D stands for, so any of you Pike Brewery fans out there that may know what their code means, uh, post it in the comments let me know how old this beer is. And like I said, we'll look and uh, see if we see anything on it. And this beer is uh, 7%, so... That's all the information it has on the label. So it is what it is. Uh, like I said, come 2014, there won't be any of these beers left in the fridge, and I won't be buying any more of them that have some kind of funky code on it. If I can't decipher it by looking at it, it'll sit on the shelf, guys. All right, they're out of Washington. This is a uh, classified as a, a as a double or a dubel at seven percent. It says availability is year round, no commercial notes, food pangs, cheese, buttery, brie, gouda, havarti, swiss, and more pungent cheeses, gorgonzola, limburger, and it says chocolate here, so I'm not I'm not aware of any dubels or, or double ales having that. Most of that chocolate uh, food pairings is reserved for the porters and the stouts, so we'll see what this looks like. It looks pretty dark in the bottle for an ale. And the meat for this is beef, is what it says. Glassworks calls for a goblet or chalice, chalice, uh, 7 percenter. I'm going to pour it in the pint glass, guys. So don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. So let's get the cap off of this one and see if it's worthy. Not quite as big a hiss as we had on the one yesterday. And it's not trying to foam up the neck here, so... Maybe it'll be a little fresher than we one we had yesterday. This is a very dark beer for a, for a double ale. Not pulling that big monster head like the one did yesterday. Very brown in the glass. Over to the light, it is a brown reddish color. It looks fairly clear though. I can see the bulb through it. There are a few bubbles uh, streaming up as normal. Looks decent in the glass, so let's get a nose on this one and see what we got. I am getting some chocolate notes, some roasted malt. Don't know if it should be classified as a double L or a dubel with that nose, though. There might be even some darker fruit in there, maybe some dates or raisins or something. Smells very rich, almost like a brown L to me. Well, a lot of roasted malt, a little sweetness, and a little hint of chocolate there. Hmm, very interesting. Let's see what this thing tastes like. Cheers, everybody. Roasted malt. A little caramel, a little toffee. I'm not getting any alcohol. Very easy drinking for a 7 percenter. I would think this is a well made beer, but it's not overwhelming in any of the aromas. Tastes pretty average though. 
I'm not getting any anything that's outstanding. It doesn't say what the IBUs are. See if it says here what the IBUs are. Commercial description, dark brown ale brewed with barley, 10% wheat, hops plus coriander, and candied sugar for the complex rich flavor, and a finish of tobacco and molasses, formerly known as Imperial Bootleg Brown. I wonder why they would switch the name to a, a double ale instead of a brown ale. Very interesting. It definitely tastes more like a brown ale to me than a double ale or a dubelle. Not blowing my socks off of my hair back. Let's let it warm up and see what uh, what it ends up with here in about 30-45 minutes. It's a 22 ounce bomber so I'm going to share the other half with her and see what she thinks of it. But It's not bad but it's not, it's not outstanding or anything to me. Very easy drinking though for a seven percenter. Stick around, I'll be right back and we'll do the final comments and chug on this one. Alright guys, I'm back, got just a little left here, I've been sitting on it about 30, 45 minutes. This is definitely a brown ale. I don't know why they're calling it a uh, double ale now. Or a dubelle. Just definitely not in that style. Sweet caramel and toffee, maybe even a little brown sugar or molasses. Very easy drinking, very sessionable for a 7% beer, but definitely not a double ale. And as the color clearly shows you, it is, uh, it is very much in, into the brown ale category as far as I'm concerned. Tastes exactly like a brown ale, so I don't know what they're trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes by re recalling it something else, but this is definitely a brown ale. Like I said, very well made beer though. I'm not getting into the alcohol. Very easy drinking. Just a slight hint of a little bit of nuttiness in there too. I, I'm at a loss for words. Uh, why they've changed the name of this from, from a brown ale to this. Definitely not in the right category now as far as I'm concerned. And like I said, I don't know what the date code means on the label. There's nothing written on the bottle anywhere. Let's do the final chug on this one. A very nice brown ale, guys. So. Not in the right style as far as I'm concerned. And as far as brown ales go, it's very easy drinking. So that tells me it's a well-made beer. But it's nothing outstanding. Okay. Guys, I'm going to give this a 5, which is a B-. Uh, as far as a brown ale goes, it's a good B beer. As far as a, a double or, or a, a, a double ale... Nah, not gonna, not gonna go there. It would it wouldn't even get to be if I was classifying it in that category. So, with that being said, let's go see what everybody else thinks. Over to rate beer, they say eighty one overall. I agree with that. And then thirty nine in the style. Kind of agree with that too. It's not in the right style now. It should be classified as a brown now. Let's go over to beer advocate, and beer advocate says eighty, which is in the good range. Yeah. I agree with that. So, if you're looking for a brown ale, a, a kind of slightly above average brown ale, not a bad beer. If you're looking for a double or, or a double ale, this ain't it. This definitely ain't it, guys. So, that's where we're at on this one. Uh, I know these guys do some great beers out there on the on the West Coast, and and these guys, especially Pike Brewery, are known for making some great beers. So. I don't know what's up with relabeling this bottle as, as a double or a dubel uh, instead of a brown ale. It's definitely a brown ale. So if you've had this one, give me some comments back on this one. Where you liked it, didn't like it, it was okay. I don't think I would seek it out again. So that being said, hit that like button and let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. I hope we can find one with a date on it. See you then.